I don't think words can properly describe how terrible Indiana football was last year and how bad last season was for the state of the program. The Hoosiers began the season ranked number 17 in the country. They had a breakout 2020 campaign. They signed their new up and coming head coach to a massive deal. And it looked like Indiana could creep into the top four teams in the Big Ten East. That's what everybody thought. Instead, they have now lost all fan support, had one of the worst seasons in school history, could barely move the ball, and everything that could have went wrong did go wrong for Indiana football in 2021. In today's video, I want to talk about the most disappointing team from 2021, the Indiana Hoosiers. We're to go through this terrible season, what went wrong, and what I think is in store for the future of the Hoosiers program. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Things were looking good for Indiana football going into 2021. They returned their star quarterback, Michael Penix, who was a dark horse Heisman contender and someone who was ranked as high as the second best quarterback in the Big Ten. That did not age well, but going into it, he had a lot of hype. At running back, they had three good options. They brought in former USC five-star Stephen Carr, had an up-and-coming player in Tim Baldwin, and one of their four-star blue-chip recruits, Samson James, was also expected to be a bit better. That did not age well. At wide receiver, Ty Freifogel decided to bypass the 2021 NFL Draft to come back and be better. They brought in former blue chip recruit DJ Matthews from Florida State, and they had another guy in Miles Marshall who was really expected to show out. At tight end, you had a future NFL player in Peyton Hendershot. The offensive line brought back a decent amount of experience, and the defense was loaded. Guys like Micah McFadden, Taiwan Mullen, and Reese Taylor all were going to be huge contributing factors to why Indiana football was going to have a great season. Expectations were so high that some thought that the Indiana-Ohio State game could determine that division and that the Rose Bowl could run through Bloomington. This is crazy when you take a look at Indiana football's history, as they have been one of the worst Power 5 programs historically, and it was shocking that they had come off two back-to-back -back winning seasons. So now we know the expectations going into 2021, but how did it go from there? Well, it was over during the first quarter. Indiana had a road game against number 18 Iowa in week one, and the number 17 versus number 18 matchup was for some reason not a nationally broadcasted game, and I guess they knew something we didn't know. The supposed dark horse college football playoff contending Hoosiers were down 31-3 at halftime to Iowa after Riley Moss had two pick sixes and Indiana did nothing but get a field goal. The final score ended up being 34-6 after Iowa pumped the brakes, and not only were they already behind in the Big Ten standings, but they already had a loss, and the momentum was not in their favor. In Week 2, they ended up killing Idaho, but Week 3 would be a huge matchup. Number 8 Cincinnati came to town, and this game was actually pretty good. DJ Matthews had his best career night, but there was one play in particular that ended this game. The Hoosiers star captain linebacker Mike McFadden was ejected in the second half, and also combining that with a couple of costly turnovers, Cincinnati went on a run late in the game and won 38-24, but a lot of people forget that Indiana was winning this game, and had they hung on, that would have changed the season tremendously. In Week 4, they went on the road to play against Bailey Zappi's Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, and they ended up winning 33-31 after a close finish. And a lot of people thought that, that team was bad, but the Hilltoppers were actually pretty good by the end of it. That got Indiana their second win, and they were 2-2, two and two, so the season wasn't quite over yet. Then, the Penn State game happened. They traveled on the road against the number 4 Nittany Lions, and for some reason this was the ABC 730 game, and Indiana put on a great showing as they were shut out 24-0. to I remember they intercepted the ball inside the red zone and couldn't even get points out of it. That showed how bad the offense had become, but it did come to life a little bit in their next game against Michigan State. The Spartans were ranked number 10 and were undefeated at the time, and came to Bloomington for this Big Ten matchup. Jack Tuttle would start that game, and after a couple of opportunities to win the game, Sparty hung on and won 20-15. After that, that highly anticipated Ohio State matchup happened, but instead of it being anything close, this game was buried on the TV networks, and Ohio State won 54-7, and the game was over after the first quarter. Now came a game that was going to determine the season, the Maryland game. If they could somehow go on the road and beat this team, they'd have an opportunity with the schedule to make a bowl game. It went back and forth, and true freshman Donovan McCauley got his first career start at quarterback, but the Terrapins ended up winning 38-35, giving Indiana a 2-6 record and pretty much ending their bowl hopes. The following week, number 7 Michigan officially ended it with a 29-7 beatdown, and that's when the team seemingly gave up. I have heard rumors that the defense apparently quit on the team because the offense was so incredibly bad, and that definitely showed. In a home matchup against Rutgers, the Scarlet Knights came in and won 38-3, and then the following week, Minnesota dropped 35 points as they killed Indiana at home for that. 
The Hoosiers were now 2-9 with an 0-8 record in the conference, and they were now starting a walk-on at quarterback. Things had gotten so bad that there were walk-ons also playing at running back, the defense had stopped trying, some were wondering if Tom Allen would even stick around, and many wondered if they'd even win three games. Unfortunately for Indiana's sake, their rival Purdue was having a pretty good year, and as they would travel to West Lafayette for the Oaken Bucket game, Purdue would stomp them 44-7, and this was one of the most embarrassing seasons in Indiana football history. The team has not been great historically, but this was terrible. They went 2-10 with an 0-9 mark in the Big Ten Conference, and they didn't even have a quarterback pass for 1,000 yards. Every single player who was supposed to be good ended up flopping. Tom Allen would have to reconstruct the whole coaching staff, and after waiting years for Indiana football to have some hype, the fans were let down. The team's top quarterback, Michael Penix, ended up getting hurt, and he transferred away to Washington after throwing for four touchdowns in seven picks. True freshman Donovan McCauley played a couple of games, but he ended up moving to wide receiver for the 2022 season. Jack Tuttle will be back once again, and then Grant Gremmel, the walk-on, also played a little bit. The Hoosiers had started four different quarterbacks, and none of them seemingly were the answer. That big three-headed running back group that I talked about at the beginning of the video was very disappointing. Stephen Carr ran for 600 yards and six touchdowns, but averaged an abysmal 3.9 yards per carry. They had two walk-ons behind him, and then Tim Baldwin and Samson James, the two highly recruited running backs, ended up both transferring. Ty Freifogel killed his draft stock, DJ Matthews got hurt, and Miles Marshall entered the portal. Micah McFadden would be the only Hoosier taken in the 2022 NFL Draft, and Peyton Hendershot and a couple of other guys would end up getting an opportunity as an undrafted free agent. As we look ahead to 2022, they fired Nick Sheridan, they lost their big-time coach in McCullo, and the Hoosiers program is kind of left picking up the pieces. At quarterback, they did bring in Missouri transfer Connor Bazelak, and he's likely going to battle it out with Tuttle for the starting job, and I hope as a Mizzou fan, Bazelak wins that job. At running back, you're going to have a couple of guys, and apparently Sean Shivers, a transfer from Auburn, has been playing pretty well at that position, so hopefully they can get a little bit more out of their run game. At wide receiver, you will return DJ Matthews and their highly recruited redshirt freshman Jaquez Smith, plus they brought in Emery Simmons, a transfer from North Carolina, Cam Camper, a pretty good junior college player, and Anderson Kobe, a Tennessee transfer. You also cannot forget that they brought in a big time four star receiver in Omar Cooper, so it looks like the wide receiver spot may not be that terrible after all. AJ Barner has been hyped up for quite a while at tight end, so this team has potential to have some good pieces. Combine that with their number 30th overall class, and Indiana football is maybe in not as bad of shape as we once thought. Indiana's class was ranked higher than 30th, but they lost their second best recruit in Jabron Payne to Notre Dame, and they're going to have to have some guys step up. There will be question marks around the defense and just the overall team in general. The schedule is honestly really difficult, and I don't really see a path to six wins. Yes, they get Illinois, Idaho, and Western Kentucky in weeks one through three at home, but I don't know if they win all three of those games, and after that, home games against Maryland and a road game against Rutgers may be their best chance to get wins 4-5, and five. and then after that, you'd have to beat a team like a Purdue, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State, Nebraska, Michigan, or Cincinnati to get that sixth win, and I'm not quite sure they're going to win any of those games, and the talent level for those other programs is much higher than Indiana. I was honestly pretty sold on Tom Allen after the 2020 season, but after last year's historic meltdown, I'm not quite sure what I think of Indiana football moving forward, and with the rise of Michigan State and Rutgers in the East, it looks like Indiana is going to battle it out with Maryland for the bottom of the conference, when just over a year ago, it looked like Indiana could jump up into the top four. It is pretty crazy to see what can happen in one year, and if you're an Indiana football fan, please let me know your thoughts down below. What went wrong in 2021? What are your expectations for the program moving forward? And what are your overall thoughts on the team? If you're a fan of another school, let me know another team or program I should take a look at in my next video. Give me your thoughts on the Hoosiers. And also don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Happy to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.